Hi, I'm Sadie Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Akata Losana. I'm from Butua and I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji in this bulletin, Sotelpa makes plans to move forward. Former Fijian who tested positive for COVID-19 shares experience and government quarters damaged by fire. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Social Democratic Liberal Party General Secretary Emelene Duituturanga says they will now focus on writing their manifesto for the 2022 general election. Sadalpa members elected Ratu Apenisa Serudakumbao as the new president yesterday, while the three vice presidents are Rote Mumukepa, Ratu Nangama Lalambalabu and George Shu Raj. The party has been in shambles over the past few months, with continued reports of disunity amongst its members. However, Ndui Tuturanga believes the party made great progress yesterday, saying the new appointments will help them move forward. Josai Nunga reports. If, uh, with the House now looking in order, Sodalpa members will now focus on moving forward. We started today because, um, as you would have noted, we have advertised, according to our constitution, the positions of party leader and deputy party leader. The General Assembly has accepted that we need to commence with that. We have a president and vice presidents who come with a lot of experience. Party leader Siti Vini Rambuka says the new appointments are inclusive of the three confederacies, Kumbuna, Tawata and Burambasanga. He believes they now have equal representation, which is something the members wanted. Apply the uh, Vanu approach. Uh, while that is a good approach, we had to be careful that we uh, work in accordance with the constitution requirements. Not only the constitution of Fiji, of uh, the party, but also the constitution of Fiji. The party's SGM held yesterday dealt with the deferment of its annual general meeting, adopted the audited financial statements for 2019, and also adopted a process to select the party leader during its AGM in November. Chosai Yenunga, FBC News. While the Sudelpa executives are hailing the outcome of yesterday's meeting, one of its MPs, Nico Nawaikula, believes the process to elect the president was unfair. Nawaikula says he raised his concerns when the special general meeting was underway because he believed those in control did not take the procedures and processes of the party fairly. He claims one faction of the party were against Tuivaka Ratuna Ngama Lalambalavu's reappointment as the president. Chasai Nunga reports. The Sodalpa executives are all praises following the appointment of Ratu Epenisa Seru Dakumbau as the new president. But fellow MP Nikona Waikula does not seem to agree. You know, uh, first we had to uh, decide on the, uh, on the president. I raised a bit of issue there because I felt that the, those who were in control uh, did not treat the procedure and, uh, and the process fairly. Now, Waikula uh, went on to say that because, amid the squabbles know, among party members, the Tuivakau was nominated uh, as one of the vice presidents uh, and he did not want to lose the opportunity and rush to support this motion. But the, uh, the critical point for me was when, uh, you know, despite all that uh, unfairness that were made against him, the Turanga Tuivakau was, you know, very strong enough, not strong enough, but very courageous to say, look, uh, he withdrew his, uh, his uh, nomination to support uh, Kubuna. But for me, as, a, uh, as an individual, you know, as soon as I saw that composition, when the Vanua is equally represented, uh, Kumbuna and uh, uh, Ovata and uh, uh, Sanga, you know, I stood up and made a plea. He says while he respects the appointment of Ratu Apenisa as their president, he will continue to make his concerns heard in the party. 
Well, um, I, 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 the point that I want to stress is that a lot more has to be done. There's a lot of animosity. There's a lot of, you know, this is differences, unnecessary differences. But from the word go, I've advised all who ask me, he said, look, this is a democratic process. We need to find our views on whoever we want, on whatever we done, within the rules of democratic process. He also highlighted that the party needs to relook at its constitution. With that, I know that uh, going forward, we will have to make uh, further amendments to the constitution. Uh, I would like that. I would like to see that uh, the managed model has to be reduced, but properly represented the, uh, the youth and the women. And the whole has to be, it has to come down drastically. He says they are now looking forward to the annual general meeting in November, which will see the appointment of a party leader. Chosayena Nunga, FBC News. Fijian Benjamin Powell is now finally home and is fighting to fully recover from COVID-19. Born and bred in Levuka, Powell moved to the United States with his parents 40 years ago and mostly lives an active and healthy life. The 50-year-old has spent four of the past six weeks in intensive care in Utah and has required extensive physiotherapy to rehabilitate his body. Lena Reese has more. Benjamin Powell was in great shape, an athletically built Fijian. His work involved marketing and education, and he moved to Salt Lake City, Utah in May this year. Powell made the move and began his first week at work when COVID-19 almost killed him. And why I'm sharing this is because I don't want anyone to go through what I went through. It is the worst thing you probably would ever want to go through, even if it's a mild symptom. Imagine I had called my family basically to do care my funeral before any of this. And I had no idea that this was gonna happen. Powell was on a ventilator for 13 days and lost more than 12 kg during his ordeal. Medical professionals say his physical fitness, positive attitude and support from family and friends are helping him recover. I moved to Salt Lake City because of my mom's family, a lot of them live here. When I say a lot, obviously Pacific Island families are big families. I've never had to go to the grocery store every week, almost every day. Um, they drop off food, they drop off everything. I've not had to lift a finger. So I'm really grateful to the culture that we come from and the caring of our family. Previously unable to speak because of the ventilation tube, he communicated by writing notes. Powell was discharged on July 7th and still has complications of COVID-19, but he is gradually putting on weight and has begun walking and doing light exercise. I thought it very hard um, to be where I was at in the recovery. I realized at that point, as close as I was to getting out of the hospital, I still had to learn how to walk and be strong and develop my strength. Powell's hope is that no one in Fiji ever has to go through the experience of COVID-19 and urges people to practice social distancing, wear a mask where possible, and practice the simple hygiene of washing hands with soap and water. Lena Reese, FBC News. The coronavirus pandemic has gripped many sectors, and the banking industry is no exception. Bank South Pacific's country head Haroon Ali says their revenue streams have been severely impacted because many of their debtors have lost their jobs and are unable to pay loan repayments. Kritika Kumar reports. BSP had to make adjustments to accommodate its customers. Since uh, we introduced our principal and interest deferment COVID uh, relief package in March. Up till now, we have assisted more than 6,000 customers, uh, representing about 46% of our lending book. Ali says the term deposits are coming down fast. However, people are more interested in the lending rates. The country head says, looking at how banks price their assets and loans, one of the most important things they consider is the associated credit risk. In the current environment, the credit risk has escalated quite significantly, which means that the bank should consider increasing rates to, to compensate for the increased risks, but we haven't. Meanwhile, the Reserve Bank governor says liquidity is currently hovering around $7.2 million. Arif Ali says in the next couple of weeks, 
liquidity might rise to $1 billion. Therefore, there should be no upward pressure on the interest rates. Even the banks will have a large amount of funds to lend out a billion dollars. On one hand, they take deposits. They can't be keeping it to save bank because we don't give them any interest on that. Sooner or later, they'll lend. So, you know, hopefully, uh, we will see some uh, pickup in commercial bank lending rate. The RBF governor says the level of foreign reserves is linked with the level of liquidity in the system. He also revealed that over the past 10 months, the inflation rate has been in the negative territory. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. A government quarters on Statham Street server was destroyed by fire this afternoon. The fire is believed to have started just after midday. An eyewitness told FBC News the fire started from one of the bedrooms. The three-bedroom wooden building was occupied by the staff of the Fiji Met Service. No one was injured in the incident. Two fire trucks were used to control the blaze. Investigation continues to ascertain the cause of the fire. Up ahead, more elderly push to care homes and Singatoka hospital staff recognized for hard work. My name is Shubu, I live in Tava Town and I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. My name is Karthi Kapdashtan, Aura Bami, Mirchi FM, it's hot. Namaskar, I'm Ali, I'm Lamba Sase, I'm always Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot in Lamba Sase. The Social Welfare Department has noticed an increase in elderly people being pushed out of their homes who are now living in either elderly homes or on the streets. Director Rupeni Fatiaki expressed disappointment, saying after receiving transfer of properties, some children are sending their elderly family members to aged care homes. Kuroi Tandulala reports. The three elderly homes in the country are now full and the social welfare department still has a lot of candidates on the waiting list. Uh, you know, some of those people have property. Once they had transferred the property to their children, the children pushed them out of the homes. This is the sad reality in the sad situation that is happening in our communities nowadays. And so it's sad you now when you assess a case, you know, and then come across a situation when after all these years, that this old person has contributed and then they're pushed out. Patiaki also highlighted that there's a little over 170 children under the legal guidance of the state, and they've also noted an increase in child abuse cases. Our uh, role is to try and strengthen the families because we believe that, you know, all these issues has to go back to the families. We need to look at what's happening within the families. Look after women, after children after the poor children and those living with disabilities and it is these sectors that uh, can face an um, exacerbated uh, inequality and vulnerability during this time. The Ministry of Women and Children which overlooks the Department of Social Welfare is working to ensure the protection of the rights of elderly people. Kurei Tantulala, FBC News. The medical staff at the Singatoka Hospital, who have been at the front, forefront helping combat the spread of COVID-19, were acknowledged and commended for their work. The Riga Fiji Beach Resort hosted some of them to show appreciation for their hard work over the past few months. Philippe Nakaso with the story. The resort deemed it fit to treat these medical staff for their sacrifice in ensuring Fijians are safe from coronavirus. <laughs> I know we are going through very challenging times, uh, uh, challenging times, and uh, while we all are thinking about uh, our, ourselves, and that uh, goes from job security to the effects of border closures and all that, you have been working hard to keep all the Fijians healthy. The staff were hosted a night with their family and friends at the Five Star Resort along the Coral Coast. <laughs> We've been working at Singatoka for the past probably close to 10 years now and even before that uh, Team Outrigger has been very supportive and uh, has been a very important stakeholder for Singatoka Hospital. Eh? We know how hard you work and uh, we know worldwide um, our rigor certainly recognises the health professionals and everything they are doing in every country. You're working overtime, you're really doing it tough 
and you're keeping us healthy and safe. <laughs> An awards night was also held to recognize individual staff and team efforts. <laughs> Philippe and I, Castle, FBC News. The Marriott International Fiji Resorts held a successful fundraising golf tournament in support of Solia Lesu. All proceedings from the charity will be given to the local community affected by the current pandemic. This charity golf event managed to raise around $11,000 from registrations and an auction. The idea with, uh, that came up across amongst the executives, uh, they put the hand in their pocket uh, to contribute to helping some of our people in the communities and then it sort of developed from there and now we have got amazing partners who have supported us through this journey. The charity event at Denaro Golf and Record Club received overwhelming support from the domestic market bringing together individuals, sponsors, businesses and sporting communities who participated in the 18-hole game. Uh, through Soleil it's a program over the last uh, few months we have uh, given provided about two and a half thousand meals to a lot of our uh, people living in the community in the villages to our associates our intention is to reach 10,000 meals over the next uh, two months the tournament was won by team Merritt International Fiji followed by team KK's hardware I think this is the first event after COVID uh, in the whole of Fiji uh, the golf course is playing really well with the sunshine you cannot ask for anything better a total of 93 golfers took part in the event yesterday. Philippe and I, Castle, FBC News. Women are still significantly underrepresented in executive positions in the football industry, and the few who have made it this far have described the journey as challenging. In tonight's successful Fijian segment, we look at the journey of Rajnita Kumar, who is the assistant coach for the Rewa Football Under-16 side, a manager and an assistant secretary for the district as well. Venina Rakautonga reports Kumar did not have any experience in soccer, and the interest only increased after being surrounded by soccer-crazy fans. Born and raised in Navua with no football background, but only a wealth of experience in management, Kumar now plays an instrumental role in the Rewa football under-16 side. For me, I, I never played football actually, and um, um, how my interest grew was like um, when you walk uh, in an environment where people are soccer crazy, and uh, um, the, the most of our chat topics are about football, the games, the international games, local games. So um, that thing really motivated me to. Um, uh, go more into this sport. Kumar was part of the Rewa management team for three years before being promoted as an assistant coach. My interest was growing into, you know, go, uh, watching games, following up uh, uh, different districts, uh, how they're performing and all. So uh, these are all my roles. I also assist uh, um, the women's uh, team, uh, um, which is also part of Rewa football. The role came with its challenges, but for the mother of one, this molded her into a better person. By helping players in other way and help me a lot uh, in, in, in making a better decisions in my own uh, uh, life. Uh, 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 just looking at what uh, situations I face with these players during the training session, during the games, coming back home. Um, I, I sit down and I, I realize some of the issues that came up that okay that also we face in our, um, our own life. She's encouraging other women to pursue a career in the football industry and don't look at it as the male dominant Field. There, there, there are uh, um, uh, women taking up m major roles in the uh, football uh, career, like some are referees, uh, um, uh, they're sitting on the women's football board and, uh, you know, uh, so I think uh, women should, uh, more women should uh, come into this field. For Kumar, the sky is the limit and she hopes her role and the work she does will take her a long way in her newfound fashion. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. Ahead in sports, Naita Siri begins Skipper Cup campaign on a high. And Rewa maintains top spot on BPL standing. This and more coming up. Radio <laughs> Fiji One. Nando Moibiti. Sambolo Braka, Nando Sela Sarakau, 
au vetu tu kumbe botkola au tata tinga tabua ondo me bolu bolu tinga sile bango na makete ondo tale taka na barong na radio fijuan ondo moi beti ola bina rigi ayo na bango keler mai na ton mai na bolo na lota maya ke mai pa ndo tale tangi ne na ndo me beti na ndo monga ni be ya mi ani radio fijuan na ndo moi beti Discipline will be an area of focus for the Naita Siri rugby side despite starting its Skipper Cup campaign on a winning note. They defeated Laotoka 29-11 at Ratavakumbau Park in Alsori yesterday. Caroline Itavi with the story. Naita Siri was ruthless both in defense and attack throughout the match. The host dominated the first half with a 15-6 lead. It was a similar scenario in the second half with Naita Siri starting strongly again Seeing a try from each Kinney Douglas and winger Tomasi Vula further extending their lead 29-6. Indiscipline was Naita Series drawback which resulted in them giving a penalty to the Maroons. Happy with the win, head coach Ilethia Tisese says they will need to work on their discipline before the next round of competition. One issue that we really have to work on which is the discipline area. We are blessed at the, at the break but still after the break we still have uh, player send off, so that's one area we need to work on. Lotoka, on the other hand, has taken this as a learning curve for the next match against the level. We made use of the whole 80 minutes, and we had a few line out and rack, which was one of our setbacks that we hope to improve before our next match against the level next week. Next week, Naita Siri will face Nandi at Ratodakumbo Park on Saturday, while Lautoka is set to face Tai Levu at Churchill Park. Karleni Tavi, FBC Sports. The Nandi rugby team are counting themselves lucky after winning their Skipper Cup match against Yasawa at Churchill Park in Lautoka yesterday. Team Secretary Jeff Tamata stressed that despite the 17-5 win, the players have a lot of areas to improve on. Filipe Naikaso reports. The Jet Setters believe the mistakes made by Asawa paved a way for their win. Uh, yes, definitely. I'm happy, especially when we just got that one out of the bag. We're so fortunate that we got that win, especially with the chances that uh, Asawa misses. The two scoring opportunities, because there's a drop ball on the line. We're so fortunate. <laughs> Despite Yasawa being reduced to 14 men with a red card to Tosefa Veto Kula in the 29th minute, Nandi struggled to take advantage of the situation. I'm really impressed with uh, Yasawa's performance today, especially the new boys, new team into the skipper competition, knowing how tough the skipper competition is. For Yasawa, they will now have to regroup and prepare for the next match. This is our first game in the skipper competition. And uh, we will improve from that. Uh, as we continue, we are going to have a silver game next week. Nandi's tries came from Sela Tonga and Vilive Miramira, while Lesawa's only points came from Inia Roko Matu. Philip and Icaso, FBC Sports. Fijian rookie Semi Valime scored his first try for the Raiders as they rallied for an 18-12 victory over South Sydney in wet conditions at GIO Stadium last night. The 21-year-old debuted in the NRL last week, coming off the bench against the Sydney Roosters. His try made a difference in the 23rd minute, putting the Canberra Bay side in fifth position on the NRL ladder. The Hurricanes produced a superb performance to end the Crusaders' incredible 36-match unbeaten home record. They beat the Crusaders 34. 432 in Christchurch last night. In another Super Rugby match last night, the Brumbies beat the Western Force 24 0 in Sydney. The River football team has maintained top spot on the Vodafone Premier League points table, defeating Lautoka 1 0 at Ratavakambao Park in Alsori this afternoon. It was Josiah Sella's lone goal in the match that gave the host the maximum points. Caroline Tavi has more. And uh, Tosaya Sela, and has opened... Lotoka came out strong in the first half, dominating possession and attack. It was 18-year-old Josiah Sela who slammed the shot in from Lotoka's outside box in the 22nd minute to give the Delta Tigers a 1-0. 
Rao was awarded a penalty after Anish Kamos fouled for dangerous tackle in the 42nd minute. The Delta Tigers could not take advantage of this opportunity with Setaraki Hughes, missing a goal from the penalty spot. The host returned firing in the second half and maintained their defense with goalie Seniru Simbokini stepping up to hold the fort in the 18-yard box. Rao football head coach Marika Rondu says they are building their momentum as each game comes. I think in terms of uh, the whole plan, this is where we want to stand, that they are in the front one. Uh, after the restart of the competition, uh, our first game was last week against Suba, so it took us to build momentum from one game to the other. Low Toka coach Ravinesh Kumar will use this loss as a build-up towards the Punjab battle of the Giants next month. Our team did well as well. Uh, we are fortunate to play Rewa before BOG, which is a very good build-up for us to go into the BOG and, uh, and knowing the strength and weaknesses of other teams and our teams as well. The Delta Tigers now have 16 points from 7 matches, while Lotoka drops to 3rd place with 10 points from 7 matches. Karlin Tavi, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, in another match, Navor registered its first win against Nasino 3-2 at Ratavakumbau Park. The server football team has earned maximum points after beating Nandi 1-0 in another VPL match at Prince Charles Park today. Christopher Wasasala scored in the 87th minute for Suva. The capital city side took advantage of the counter-attack and Wasasala did not make any mistake to score the lone goal of the match. The winners pushed Suva to second place on the points table, standing with 12 points behind leaders Rewa, who has 16 points. Quick look at weather. It was proper low pressure lies just to the north of the group. Associated cloud and showers affect the northern parts of the country. A quick look at the weather map in the west. Humid with clouds and sunshine. A couple of afternoon showers were experienced. Eastwards from Pacific Harbor to Suva, overcast with humid conditions. Slight chances of some showers later this evening. And up north, a mixture of sun and clouds were the order of the day. At sea, moderate to fresh southeast winds, gusty at times, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide is at 11.27 p.m. with low tide at 5.39 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.35. Now for tomorrow, expect cloudy with some showers over Benulevu, Tabuni and nearby smaller islands. Showers clearing from tomorrow. Tomorrow's temperatures will remain between 30 and 31 degrees. And our further outlook, we're looking further on to Tuesday. Expect cloudy periods with showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Fine weather elsewhere, cool at night. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Sidelpa makes plans to move forward. Former Fijian who tested positive for COVID-19 shares experience and government quarters damaged by fire. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. A poll question this week we're asking, do you feel the new budget is going to make things easier in these trying times? Visit our FBC website to answer. And remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj by the Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. From Until tomorrow, from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable new week ahead. Bye for now. I'm Lalit Narayne. I'm Red of Fiji to Sultan. Red of Fiji to Eskadar. Yeah, I'm at Abu Sahar Seborao. Miranam Sharmai. We're here at Radio Fiji to Hamesa Suntao. You're Radio Fiji to this Kadar. Miranam Chandrahe, Mera Kitty Sebaskati. I'm Kiram Ram. I'm Radio Fiji to Bohot Pasanda. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharkan.